Today we're standing at the Grand National Roadster Show, which has a long legacy, all the way back to 1950. Lowriders at a hot rod show, is, it adds a little bit of color and flavor to this event. The interesting thing about seeing the lowriders and the custom cars come together stylistically right now is there's really a cultural clash there. People ask me all the time, what is a hot rod? And I'll tell you in the very first issue of Hot Rod Magazine, Robert E. Peterson wrote that it is any car that's modified by its owner for either performance or appearance. The original Hot Rods were really about racing. They were dry lakes cars, top speed cars, drag cars, but almost immediately it became a customization market. And you saw guys that were building not so much for performance, but for style. And we see that all the way back into the late 40s. Today we're standing at the Grand National Roadster Show. Originally it was just that, a roadster show, but today there is everything to be found here. It's a melting pot of car style. We see retro, we see cutting edge, we see low riders, trucks, everything. I'm constantly walking down the aisles and looking at everybody else's ideas and you know, the bar is continually set at every show when you see when these guys enter their vehicles. You can take what a guy's doing over here on his lowrider or whatever and apply it to the car you're building and that's how the whole thing just grows and evolves and we get new styles of hot rods and customs all the time. There's the hot rod styles on this end and the lowrider styles on this end, if you will. The lowriders are slowly catching up at least halfway up to the hot rod style, so to speak. Not to say that the hot rods aren't watching what we do, but we both kind of copy off from each other's styles and we're always continually changing up. For a long time, a reader of Hot Rod Magazine would look at a lowrider and be like, mm. You know, it's got a velour interior, it's overkill on the paint job and things like that. And culturally, the builders didn't really get along either. But that's not happening now. You really see the whole thing meshing. And in fact, I think that the guys who are the baddest metal flake painters, the best airbrushers, the best pinstripers, are all coming out of the lowrider world. And we've got to get with those guys to make the cars that hot rodders want, or that more specifically, that greaser customizers want. Sometimes they'll put out a hot rod out there with just the right pearl, and it'll blow away all the paint jobs if it's just the right different color. And I've seen that sometimes, and it gives me an idea. Maybe I don't have to shoot my car in a candy or a flake. Maybe I can get just the right pearl that no one has, and that might make you a winner. When I look at a lowrider, I think it is closer to being a custom car. Lowriding began with the old lead sleds and went into the customs. And out of that, the lowriders broke off. There was a club called the Tridents that put on a show at the Los Angeles Sports Arena that really started to blend the two styles. You saw a lot of custom cars that started evolving lower and lower, paint jobs wilder and wilder, and ultimately wheels smaller and smaller. You saw stuff going on in places like Whittier, Bellflower, East LA that started to separate from what was happening in what we deem the custom car world. You will see things now that are pinstriped and metal flaked in a style you might consider a lowrider in the 70s or 80s, but now we're calling it a rockabilly car or a greaser car. And when it comes down to it, the only difference is it's probably on 15-inch Astro Supremes with white walls instead of being on a set of 13-inch wires. Definitely this, this is a melting pot that's ruined for about 15 years already. When I travel around the country with lowrider and I talk to people there, lowrider fans, and I let them know. You gotta look at the other automotive industries. You gotta see what Hot Rod's doing out there, what their ideas are, and how you can take from something here, something there, change it up a little bit, and add it to your car. At the same time that we're seeing our retro customizers sort of absorb some style off of older lowriders, you're seeing the lowrider guys start to evolve in some interior and engine treatments that typically would have been in the high-end hot rod world. It's all about the detail. It's all about placing things in a car that are seen, not noticed. Instead of velour, I'm seeing leather. Instead of just a small block Chevy, we're starting to see a few LS1s in low riders. Or if they do have a small block, we're seeing dual quads. To build reliability, we've taken a little bit of the hot rod world and put it into the low rider market, making the cars reliable, putting fuel injection in the vehicles in order for them to, to uh, do the long haul. Now it's all about all show, all go. So while the hot rod world's moving back a little bit, the low rider world is moving forward. You want to travel in comfort, and because there's no limits, you want something reliable that you can fire up 
that sounds good. If people are gonna appreciate your paint, they're gonna ask you what's in the trunk. Oh, you got a nice interior. What do you have under the hood? You know, and back in the old days, it's like, well, I'd really rather not open up my hood. Now, that hood comes up. I don't want to make this seem like it is just one big giant love fest. I mean, the lowrider guys and the hot rod guys aren't partying together too much anymore. Because I got to be honest, some of the hot rod guys still think some of that stuff is pretty tacky. We're not into the big naked lady murals. We're not into the velour interior with the bar or the roulette wheel or anything like that. Can't really get into a 13 inch wire. So while we like to borrow off each other, we're not necessarily borrowing the whole program. <laughs> At the end of the day, I'm going to fight for that wheel and tire until the day I die. And people may be upset with it by the way it looks or think that it ruined the looks of the car. That's why they're different. We're the originals. Not that I can completely bash on the low rider guys, because hot rod guys do some stuff too. You might not like a Virgin Mary, but I would definitely take a Virgin Mary uh, mural over this one right here. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest, bad taste is forever. So performance, uh, it's crossover. Mm, that was good.